third Monday of the, the third week, is Monday of the third week of Easter. We're happy to have you here with us today on this day. It's just starting to uh, have some sunshine outside, so I hope you are able to at least open a window and, or at least the curtains and get some sun in there. And I'd ask you to take a moment to place yourself in the presence of the Lord as we prepare to begin this liturgy. Shepherd of Souls, verses 1 and 2. sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did, for through the healing paschal remedies you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Sicilia and Asia, Silica and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen that they could not withstand the wisdom of the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, 
We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders, and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified. This man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to God.
Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, <clears throat> and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> For those of you who are Star Trek fans, not Star Wars, but Star Trek fans, <clears throat> you will be familiar with the reality that is called the Prime Directive. It's sort of immaterial what the Star Trek Prime Directive is, but what you need to know is that it was called the Prime Directive because any decision that any crew made had to be filtered through that Prime Directive. Everything else was secondary to the Prime Directive. Now, I think in Scripture, we have a couple examples of Jesus giving us prime, his prime directive. One of them occurs today in the Gospel of John. The people are following Jesus. They track him down after he got across the sea without a boat. They had just seen him feed the 5,000. And he tells them, listen. I think a lot of you were following me because I fed you yesterday. That's really not the reason to follow me. Because you will be hungry again. And again, and again, and again. And I think in our lives so often we are on that pursuit of the things that satisfy us immediately. It's understandable. Self-preservation implies that we eat, and on a regular basis. I get that. But we're called to use a different filter in discerning the will of God. And that filter calls us to a bigger picture. Jesus says, when they ask him today, what can we do to accomplish the works of God then? He says, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Now, at first, 
that might sound like pie in the sky theology. Well, I do believe in, in you, Jesus. I, I, I believe in, in you as the Son of God, the one that the Father sent. I believe that. But do we? But do we? Do we say we believe it and then behave as if everything is dependent upon what we do? That we have to make things happen. That we have to change things. That we have to be in control. And then we go back to church on Sunday and we say, but I believe in you, God. Jesus asks them and us to sit for a minute with what it means to believe in him. It means we are radically open to that unknown future, which is scarier than heck for us, isn't it? It means that we are open to the things that occur in our lives that we can't control. And when confronted by those things, the work of God is to revert to our fundamental belief, our prime directive. Jesus is the Son of God who has come to redeem us and will ultimately redeem all things. This is so hard particularly when we are confronted by things in our life that are overwhelming. And we can find ourselves feeling so helpless. People in the hospital who we can't visit. People who have died who we can't mourn. People who we love, who we can't see except across the way by electronic communication. The work of God is to believe in the one that he sent. And so we are challenged this day to trust in God's plan and to be open. One of the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, has been interpreted in a way that I think helps us today with this Believing in the one he sent. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Talks about the people. Who deal with life. And do, who do not have the resources. To fix what's broken. The hungry. The homeless. The disenfranchised. And, you know, ironically, we can look at that group and say, well, I have resources. But there will come a point when no matter how many resources that any of us have, we will confront something we can't fix. And then what are we going to do? Get angry, get frustrated, get sad, get confused. What are we going to do? The work of God is to believe in the one that he sent. And the challenge that we have today is to turn all those things over to God. As hard as that may be. As frustrating as that may be. And allow God 
God's grace to come into our lives. You know, every time I preach a funeral, I am cognizant that nothing that I say in that homily will bring the person back. Nothing that I say in that homily will heal the hurt of those who are mourning. The only thing that I can offer is that we embrace our belief in Jesus Christ, the one whom God sent, and believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. That's the biggest step each of us has to take short of approaching our own death is to accept the hope that Christ gives us about eternal life. Jesus is saying to us today, apply that same hopefulness to all of the uncontrollable circumstances in your life. And let it go. Let it go. As we continue today, let us reflect, not in a morbid way, but in a cognizant way about all of those circumstances that we cannot control. And let us repeat the words of Jesus Christ, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And let us pray for the grace of that spirit to come to each of us. And in particular this day, let us pray for all those who are struggling with that immovable rock covering the tomb of their hope. The angel of the Lord will move that rock. And they will see that hope. These are difficult times. But remember the prime directive of Jesus Christ to which we should turn. This is the work of God. That you believe with all your heart. With all your mind with all your soul in the one he sent. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Almighty Father, for Pope Francis and Bishop Molesic. May God continue to give them the courage and strength necessary for effectively leading our church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our government leaders, may the promptings of the Holy Spirit guide them in working to protect the sanctity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of those who are on the front lines, taking care of us by providing us with essential services, both in the medical community and in the community at large, may the angel of God protect them in their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for all of the sick, that God would touch them with his healing power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all those who have died, may they enjoy eternal bliss in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for intentions that you bring to this liturgy within your hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all goodness, we thank you for hearing our prayers and ask that you answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up Not to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs>
indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
and with with your spirit. Let us across the way offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Almighty ever-living God, you restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be to God. Closing him today is number 840, Shepherd of Souls, verses 3 and 4 in the Green Gather Hymn.
hope you had a, a great weekend. And uh, as we do every day, we will be having this liturgy Monday through Saturday at 10.30 a.m. And Bishop Molesic will provide you the Sunday liturgy at 9 o'clock a.m. How do you remember about those things? You text FAITH to the number 724-305-3057 and you will get all of the updates that you need to be connected. This evening at 6.30, there's a special presentation about COVID, the COVID-19 virus and our faith that is directed primarily to kids. Big people can watch too if you'd like. So please feel free to tune in. Uh, it's going to be on the diocesan website and diocesan Facebook page. And I think eventually then end up on the diocesan website. But if you would haven't done that yet and you text the faith to this number, you'll get reminded about that and how to get there. Once again, thank you so much on behalf of Bishop Molesic and the pastors of the diocese for your continuing generosity in keeping us going and able to provide these services to you. Diocese of Greensburg.org, giving, parish offertory, and let us all this wonderful sunny day pray for each other, lift each other up, and allow each other to find confidence in the hope of Jesus Christ that all things will come to fruition and resurrection through him. So as we do uh, every day, we have a postlude, and the uh, postlude today is an improvisation of something. I'm not getting... <laughs> Something's going to get improv, you figure it out, and uh, enjoy, uh, God bless, and we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.